I'm so excited about the new archive Me event. Me too. Finding out more information and lore about the characters, yeah. super excited. And about. maybe it's gonna explain stuff like why Anna can put Diva's mech to sleep but not Torbjorn's turret. Like kind of how like Junkrat's ult doesn't hurt him when it explodes, but Farah's missiles do. Or like how Sombra can't just kill literally any playable Omnic character in the game by hacking them. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to Game Gorgon. My name's Indigo. And I'm Krug. We're going to be talking about the Archive event as well as the new event, Retribution. Let's talk about the Overwatch Archives first because that might be a little bit confusing for some people. Sure. The Overwatch Archives is an umbrella term that encompasses all of the PvE missions that have to do with Overwatch's history. Mm -hmm. So missions that kind of explain where the characters are from, how they got to know each other. For example, the Uprising event, which is the very first mm -hmm. one that we ever saw, was Tracer's first mission. And so yeah. that's kind of like adding a bit of flavor. And there's some custom fun voice lines in that mission that reference like, protect the rookie, or like, be careful, rookie. <laughs> Strike team, we're counting on you. And keep the rookie safe. You can count on me, sir. Stuff like that. But it's not an event in and of itself, right? Sure. It's just a collection of events. Blizzard, when they released the Uprising event previously, didn't have this umbrella term. No. Uh, no, which, no, but they kind of like, kind of yeah. let, let it out of the bag on accident. Yeah. Like the loot boxes actually had the name archive on them. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if they originally had the idea of calling it an archive or we're just like, hey, we call we, it the yeah, loot box we archive. We put the archive on the loot box. <laughs> May as well use it. This year we're going to have a new mission from the Overwatch archives called Retribution between April 10th and the 30th. So you guys can actually go and play right now. Yes. So what is Retribution? Well, without uh, getting into any spoilers, Retribution is a very important mission in Blackwatch's history. For those of you that don't know, Blackwatch is the kind of secret covert ops, do things that Overwatch wouldn't feel comfortable with doing division of Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Four of the characters, Moira, McCree, Reaper, Genji, going out on a mission that was supposed to be kind of covert and sort of like get in, get out, go unnoticed. Uh, that's not how it ended up working. So they end up having to fight Talon, a bunch of Talon agents swarming them while they're waiting to be rescued. The event is actually going to be in Rialto, Venice, Italy. And uh, it looks pretty cool. Like the, the map itself seems to be interesting enough to be its own. In fact, it looks like we're actually going to be seeing this as a real map for PvP after the event. Right, after the event, it's gonna actually go into PTR first. Mm -hmm. One minor difference that we already know between the map that we're gonna be getting for PVP and the one we're getting for PVE is that the PVP one's going to be during the day. So it's not gonna keep that nighttime feel. Sure. Um, so that Widowmakers aren't OP because you can't see them <laughs> against the dark background. <laughs> Since we're fighting Talon as opposed to the Omnix this time, we're gonna get a couple new enemies. First is the Sniper, which just kind of looks like Widowmaker with Reaper's Shadow Step. Yeah, like it's just a reskin of, of, of Widow. Which it, like <laughs> has uh, the potential to be kind of annoying. The other guy is uh, the, the Heavy Assault. Yeah. Which is kind of like a walking bastion. Yeah, walking double bastion. <laughs> just think of walking <laughs> double bastion. I mean, bastion walks. Oh, but like not. not so, in, turret not form bastion <laughs> walking is. <laughs> the last one we're going to mention is the Assassin. There's actually some pretty interesting speculation going on here mm -hmm. that I don't necessarily agree with, but I want to believe like really hard. The assassin is the only character in the cinematic trailer that attacks the camera, I guess. And it also seems like the assassin doesn't use any other characters' animations. They they have their own set of yeah, at kind least of current animations. Right, and it also seems like they have a unique kit. Like they have a, like a kit that they had to design specifically for the enemy, mm -hmm. which seems kind of new. Like there were those little dogs in the, the Uprising event that were super unique. They like had a beam that never stopped mm -hmm. and like moved in a special way and there were a lot of them. So maybe like you can it, say they've done that before. One, there was a ton of dogs in the event. That's what I'm saying, right? they were trash. Yeah, they were exactly. disposable, and they're disposable. In this, it I mean, at least it looks like they're a unique character, whether yeah. or not you're going to be facing off a couple of them. Right. And the, and he, he or she, I believe it's a she, mm -hmm. has abilities that were originally built for Genji when Genji and Hanzo were, we're like the one same character. character yeah. Like he would like stick up onto the wall with yeah. his sword and just wait for people to come yeah. by and then, then slash them. And that's what that character looks like they're doing. One last little interesting tidbit about the retribution event. We're gonna be getting an all heroes mode like we did last year with the uprising event. But this time, according to Jeff, it's going to be something dynamic, something that changes based mm -hmm. on who you pick, or at the very least changes because you've picked 
all heroes mode as opposed to the set like hyper balanced Genji, Moira, blah, 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 that they've forced you to play mm -hmm. in the real version of the event? Well, and I remember that in the Uprising event from last year, it was uh, slightly more difficult. And I don't know if it was because you had a non-balanced group or if it was because they, they purposely made the enemies more difficult. Just because you had more tools at your disposal. Exactly. And I, this sounds like it's something else. Like this yeah. doesn't seem like a simple retool of difficulty. Well, and he even said, Jeff even said that the reason they're doing this is because players came out last time and said, make this change, like make this different, please. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the motivation behind it. So I feel like it's not gonna be the same. I don't, honestly, to, to be honest with you, I don't remember it scaling differently when you did all heroes versus normal. But that having been said, even if it did, like this is gonna be something different. Yeah, no, it, it, even 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 if it didn't last year, it, the way that he's talking about it sounds like it's not just a simple, just like, yeah. oh, we've, we've notched it to Which like... is good, because I like different things. <laughs> Speaking of different things, the last little thing that we're going to be talking about is the new skins that skins? we're going... Yeah, we're gonna have access to some new skins, whether you get them or not, I mean, that's all up to the loot box gods. You can actually get any legendary skin in the game immediately. Like, the, you can guarantee that the next loot box you open will have a given legendary skin. Uh -huh. If you just buy that skin with coins first, <laughs> and then open a loot box, 100% drop chance, I swear. Now we've already talked about the somber skin, uh, and I think both of us kind of agreed we saw the somber skin, and we actually like it. Yeah, way more than a default. Yeah, it, like the default's unique and is different, and, and it's it's got that unique like twist to her, but I like the, this Talon skin that she's got. Doomfist also got a nice uh, skin. I don't like his as much. I think it's it's unique. It's different, but. Eh. It's like a little unoriginal. It's just kind of like black looking. Yeah, it's just like it's like here's here's just like a slight different color. It's yeah. not different. Uh, I like his face paint in his new skin. Sure. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. cool looking. Maze is just like award for funniest skin in the game. Well, and it's funny because uh, when you originally were doing the research on yeah. this, you <laughs> thought it was just the summer game. I skin. thought it was a summer game skin because she's wearing a summer game shirt, and I, I clicked on it and I saw that the this video that you're probably looking at right now. And I was like, this can't be right, but it is. It's just her pajamas. Yeah. Would they call it May Jams? No, pajame. Pajames. But a tsh. Well, because it's her it's her outfit that she wore in the uh, in her video. But a tsh. pajames. <laughs> Alright everyone, head down to the comments and let us know what is your favorite skin coming out of the Uprising Archives event slash retribution event. Uh, while you guys are down there, make sure to hit the like button. Uh, also make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon because again, I, I, it's not gonna end. Uh, YouTube sucks and doesn't understand what the word subscribe means. Uh, I remember one time I subscribed to a monthly magazine and it sent me a magazine every four months. It was yeah. very strange. Mm -hmm. Weirdly enough, it was a monthly magazine. Yeah. Mm. Uh, if you guys want to talk to us, you can hit us up on Twitter. My name is Indigo, and you can hit me up at IndigoQT. And I'm Krug. You can get me at KrugQT on Twitter. You can also reach both of us at underscore QTimes, also on Twitter. We've been GameGorgon. We'll see you guys tomorrow.